folks, the Filipina P here. And today I'm introducing a new segment where I'll be answering your relationship questions. It's called Dr. Filipina. But let me say up front that I'm not a doctor or licensed therapist. I'm just a woman who's been educated in the school of life and I'm happy to share what I know about life and love between East and West. Right from the start of my channel, I've gotten a lot of emails about dating and relationship issues. And I think that many of you guys appreciate the fact that I can give you the female perspective in a way that makes sense. People have always told me that I give good dating advice. So let's put that to the test right now. I have, of course, changed the names of the people involved and paraphrased the questions so that we can get right to the meat of things. So let's see who we have first. Hello, P. My name is Simon. I'm a 58-year-old disabled man living in the UK. I've had a serious online relationship for the past year with a 29-year-old Filipina named Johanna. She has no kids, no husband, and we are very much in love. My problem is that I can't move overseas or I'll lose my benefits, and I can't afford to live without them. I really love Johanna, so I'm planning to propose to her and bring her to the UK where we both can live. What do you think? Well, Simon, before I answer, let me take a while to seriously consider my opinion. Okay, that's long enough. I think it's a really bad idea and I'll tell you why. I'm assuming from your email that you two have never met in person and you're planning to enter into a legally binding contract with a virtual stranger? I know, you're thinking of all the loving words that have passed between you two and the amazing plans you have made together. But you gotta look at reality. At your age, even in the best of health, your wife is gonna need to be your caregiver when she's still marriage material in the West. I'm not saying that it'll never work, but to trust that someone you never even met is gonna do that for you and stay by your side? I think that's a pretty risky plan, unless you're the kind of guy that likes to play Russian roulette with four bullets in the chamber, cause that's about your odds of success. And I'm being generous. Chances are, even if she really does love you, within a few years, she'll find a bunch of reasons not to. Someone else will catch her eye and whatever promises you made to each other will go right out the window along with half of your assets. Trouble in a relationship doesn't start with you two staring into each other's eyes on the internet. Trouble starts a year or two later, when the newness of actually being together wears off and all the flaws that you couldn't see online are staring you right in the face. Like the way she chews with her mouth open, doesn't do anything about her nasty toenail fungus, and worst of all, doesn't seem to care if you drink yourself to death. And by that time, it's too late to realize you made a bad choice. In my opinion, it's not worth the risk. If I were you, Simon, I'd plan a series of short trips to the Philippines to visit her in her natural environment, Meet her family and her friends. Get to know her real personality and her real intentions. The longer you can spend time together, the more you can reduce the risk of problems later. And if you're not well enough to travel, have Johanna come visit you as often as possible for as long as possible before you even consider marriage. And make sure you get a good prenup when you do. I know that's not what you were wanting to hear. You were wanting to hear me say, Best of luck to you both. But in this case, I just can't. Be careful, my friend. The next email comes from Matthew, who doesn't give his age but says he's American. He writes, Dear P, I used to be in a relationship with a Filipina named Nikki. I really thought we were falling in love with each other. But one day she just said, I found someone else and ghosted me. I was heartbroken, but after a while I met a new girl named Anna, and we've been in a committed relationship for five months now. Just the other day, I got a message from Nikki, my ex, who started chatting almost as if nothing had happened. Her relationship with the other guy is over, so she's sniffing around me again. I have no intention of getting back together with Nikki. But I did exchange a few texts with her just to see how she's doing and I'd probably stay in touch if she wanted to. 
Well, suddenly I feel really guilty because I know that if my current girlfriend Anna found out that my ex and I were chatting, she'd go ballistic. What should I do? Well, first, Matthew, let me congratulate you on feeling guilty in the first place. Too many people these days would just keep right on chatting with as many other people as they wanted to and not feel any guilt at all. But as far as what you should do about it, it really depends on the agreement you have with Anna. When you're just starting out, you're under no obligation to tell her everyone you talk to, every place you go, and keep her informed of your bathroom schedule. On the other hand, if you guys are engaged, it would clearly be considered a betrayal for you to be secretly communicating with another woman who you used to have feelings for behind your girlfriend's back. I don't know your situation with Anna or what you expect from each other. All I know is that you say you're in a committed relationship, which can mean different things to different people. So here's the litmus test I'd use. If the situation was reversed and Anna was talking to an ex-boyfriend, do you think you'd have the right to know about it? And if Anna could read all the new messages between you and Nikki, is there something in there that would make you cringe if she saw it? If so, then you know you're being deceptive and not telling her about it is a lie by omission. Either way, I'd politely put an end to your conversation with Nikki. Why would you want to have anything to do with a woman that treated you so coldly? She's bad news. But the question remains, should you confess to Anna? Now here's where my advice is probably not going to be very popular. I bet most people would say, look, you didn't get caught, so just say goodbye to Nikki and don't rock the boat with Anna. But I believe that you'll actually be doing both of you a favor if you come clean and explain that your ex contacted you, you responded in a casual manner, and now you won't have anything more to do with her. That shows Anna that you're not hiding anything, even things you could get away with. She might hit you with a tampo attack, but she'll also learn that you can be trusted to confess any questionable behavior in the future. And that, folks, is absolutely golden in a mature relationship. Now, if you take my advice and she breaks up with you, you have to ask yourself, do you really want to be with someone that insecure and unforgiving? Because I guarantee you, there will be worse things ahead in your relationship. And if she's going to bail over something like this, you probably wouldn't stay together for long anyway. But that's just my two cents. The next email is from a Filipina. She writes, P, please stop flirting with my boyfriend or I'll... Oops, wrong email. Here we go. P, my name is Christy and I'm in a relationship with a guy from Germany who says he's separated and getting a divorce. But German law requires that he wait one year before getting it finalized. He says that by the time he's allowed to enter the Philippines, he'll be legally single and he plans to come here to be with me. Several times, I've heard a female in the background when we talk. And although he says it's his daughter, she sounds a lot older than the 12 years old she's supposed to be. How do I know if he's being real with me or he's just playing around? I'm 34 and getting older, so if it's not serious, then I need to consider other options. Am I just being paranoid? Well, thanks for writing in, Christy. It's always nice to hear from a Filipina sister. What you're describing is a common feeling and one that both sexes from both sides of the equation ask themselves. How do I know if it's real? Well, there's no easy answer for that question. But let's start with the female voices you hear in the background when you talk. Have you ever said, Aw, she sounds so cute. Can I say hello to her right now? He may not want to include his young daughter in your relationship yet. And that's his right. But maybe he'll call her over and put your fears to rest. Other than that, all you can do is confront him. But if he's lying about the female's identity, chances are, He'll keep lying about it. As far as his claim that he can't get legally divorced for a year, I did some checking and that does seem to be the law in Germany. So his story checks out. 
I suppose you could request that he show you his paperwork to prove his current marital status. If you're concerned that he might still be together with his wife and just playing with you. But basically, it comes down to the feeling in your gut. Yes, he could be making a fool out of you. But that's what love is. Vulnerability. No one really knows the mind of someone else. Especially not in the beginning. And sometimes you just have to trust until you see reason not to. And look at it from the foreigner's perspective. Here's the pretty young lady from a faraway land who says she loves him. But how the heck does he know? It's all a matter of trust and hoping that you made the right decision. At least you're not contemplating what a lot of other Filipinas do. And that's cultivating relationships with three or four guys at the same time as backup plans. I understand why that's a popular strategy. Because all too often, the foreigners disappear faster than their promises. But that's no way to start a real relationship that must be based on trust. I wish I had some magical way to instantly determine if his love for you is true. But until you find out for sure, all you can do is listen to your head as you follow your heart. Keep me posted. And finally, we have an email from Artie a 52-year-old from Australia. He writes, Miss P, I've been in a relationship for three years with a woman from Davao, Philippines. I've made several trips to see her in person and she seems like the perfect woman. We connect on so many levels and I haven't seen any red flags with her behavior. We still talk almost every day, sometimes for an hour or more. I feel like we've known each other forever. My problem is that every time I send her a little money to help her out, it's gone within a day and I find out that it all went to family members for a never-ending list of reasons. It makes me angry and all of our arguments are about this one issue. But I don't want to totally cut her off because I know she needs the money. So my question is, how do I get her to stop doing this? Is there any way to separate your Filipinas' finances from her family's? Oh, Artie, you've touched on something that is the source of a lot of conflict in Philam relationships. It's a really sticky situation, and you're up against a cultural tradition that's so ingrained that it'll be tough to deal with. As many of you know, the family unit here is a lot tighter than its Western counterpart. When a Filipino has money in their pocket, there's all kinds of pressure to separate them from it. As you said, the list of reasons goes on and on. Her brother needs milk for his child, tuition fees for school, her mom needs to pay the electric bill, her dad needs medicine, and somehow, no matter how much money you pour into the situation, it'll never be enough. If you give her 5,000 pesos, somehow they'll need 10,000 tomorrow. To tell you the truth, you're not going to be able to change it. Just ask almost any foreigner with a Filipino partner. Unless your girlfriend's family has their own money, which is rare, they're going to see you as the fountain from which all money flows, and they'll probably assume there's an endless supply. So what can you do? First, what is your girlfriend's attitude about this? Does she feel torn like her loyalties are divided? Does she feel like it's your job to provide not only for her, but her whole family too? Is she embarrassed about the situation and sympathetic to your point of view? Well, I don't know your finances or your willingness to help, but you have several options, all of which require you to have a heart-to-heart -heart with your partner. You can totally cut her off, and explain that since the money is not going where it's supposed to, you're no longer willing to provide it. That hurts both you and her, and it doesn't really solve the problem. Or you can say, look, I'm giving this money for you and you only. If you give it away, I'm not going to keep sending it because I never agreed to be financially responsible for your family. But that puts her in a really tight spot because the pressure they exert on her will never stop. So she either has to lie to her family and say she doesn't have any money, lie to you and say she used it all herself, or look like an ungrateful greedy child to her parents. 
Another option that some people try is to invest in some sort of business that the family can operate to provide an income for the future. While a few businesses do succeed, it's the experience of most foreigners that the majority of the businesses fail and the investment disappears down the drain. Most Filipinos don't know anything about running a business and they end up eating their inventory, letting friends and neighbors borrow money that's never repaid. And before long, the business fails. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just telling it like it is. And that leaves the final option, the one that most couples settle on as a compromise. Come up with some agreed upon figure that you can part with every month and make everyone understand that this is the only money you'll be sending and not one peso more. Make sure your girlfriend is on board and that she agrees to keep a healthy percentage of your monthly gift for her own needs. Believe me, the family will still try to get more no matter what you do, and the reasons will get more complex and creative. Instead of being asked for money outright, they'll use the term borrow, but don't fall for it. In my country, borrow means give. Just stick to your guns and get ready to use the word no a lot. I can tell from your email that this solution probably isn't going to please you. But if anyone has a better answer, I encourage you to post it so that Artie has another option to consider. Well, that's it for today, folks. The first episode of Dr. Phil Lepina. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to your comments about my advice and your own opinions on how you'd handle these problems. I'll be back in just a few days with something else to make you think and make you smile. Till next time. Dr. Filipina, oh, I'm not a medical doctor. I just give relationship and dating advice. No, I don't do body cavity searches. That would be officer P. Okay, bye-bye. Dr. Filipina, oh, I'm so sorry you're bedridden. And yes, I'm sure you need a sponge bath, but that would be nurse pee. Okay, okay, take care. Dr. Filipina, you need a stiff what? Oh, a stiff drink. Okay, well, that would be bartender pee. Yeah. She's great. Bye-bye. Oh, Dr. Filipina. Yes, yes, I'm sure you were born a biological male. I'll take your word for it. I don't do those types of examinations. That would be crazy. Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Clooney. No problem, George. Oh, actually, George, I do have some free time this afternoon. I'd be happy to take a look at it for you. Is 3 p.m. okay? Oh, or anytime, like right now, if you prefer. In fact, I was going to take the whole day off. So whatever works for you is fine with me. I can even come to your place if that makes it easier. If you think about it, I'm kind of like a pirate helping you navigate the tricky waters of Filipino culture and dating, and telling you how to find your first mate. Are you gonna listen to just anyone, or trust your Captain P to lead you to the booty? And you best be hitting the like button, subscribing to me channel, and hitting that notification bell, or I'll shiver your timbers and cut off your jib. And while we be sailing, why not feast your eyes on me other videos too? And yes, I'm a real pirate. I've got the sunken chest to prove it.